Hello viewers, welcome to Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. I am your host for today, Muruna Barnabas Atiai. It is often said that children and youths are the leaders of tomorrow. Every year, the 27th of May presents Nigerians with a unique opportunity to celebrate these future leaders. Children, by their nature, are very inquisitive and impressionable asking questions and experimenting with varying results. They will in turn influence their peers in various social cycles. In today's episode, we examine children's exposure to social cultural influences and how they can impact the war on corruption presently and in the future. First though, let's join Ruth Awadi as we bring you updates from the anti-corruption scene in Nigeria. Welcome to this segment on anti-corruption stories. I am Ruth Awudi. A federal high court in Abuja has ordered the interim for feature of 10.7 million naira traced to the bank account of Juan Toboy Kowakli, Vice Chancellor of Eco Superior de Gestion et de Technology, ESGT Cotonou Bene Republic, by ICPC for allegedly being proceeds of unlawful activities. ICPC acting on intelligence had launched an investigation into alleged criminal conspiracy and degree racketeering involving Toboy and his agents, the promoters of Access Institute of Advanced Learning, AIAL, supposedly based in Kano. Mubarak Hamza Adam and Abdullahi Shehu Yusuf, as well as one Abdurrahama Hadi Badamosi of the Federal College of Education, Kano. The group was investigated for alleged involvement in issuing fake degrees to Nigerians for a fee. The court granted the request made by the commission for the interim for feature of the 10.7 million naira including an order directing the publication of the said preservation order in a widely circulating national newspaper calling upon any interested party to show cause why the for feature should not be made. In another development, the chairman of ICPC, Dr. Musa Adamo Aliyu SAN, has assured the British High Commission of the Commission's continued support in tackling visa racketeering in Nigeria. Dr. Aliyu stated this when he received Mr. Koran Oakley, the International Liaison Manager of the Home Office International Operations in the British High Commission, Abuja, in his office. He further said that both organizations would seek further avenues to work together in other areas that would be mutually beneficial. In his remarks, Mr. Oakley said that he was in ICPC to seek further collaboration that had started some years ago. The Commission had previously engaged in strategic intervention on visa issues resulting in arrests, prosecutions and convictions of several persons, thereby earning ICPC commendations from embassies and high commissions in Nigeria, including those of the British, United States of America, India, amongst others. The chairman of ICPC, Dr. Musa Adamo Aliyu SAN, has blamed the high incidence of corruption and cyber crimes in Nigeria on weak system in governance. The ICPC boss stated this in a paper presented at the Nigeria Interreligious Council first half meeting held in Abuja. 
He decried that decision-making process in the country had become unaccountable and access to decision-makers was dependent on restricted social networks where earning does not correspond with the basic needs of life and where government control and enforcement of existing laws are weak. Corruption keeps on killing our society. Why? Because they might view there is more democracy. And also, there is no serious punishment against those who engage in corruption. Because hardly would you see those who engage in corruption are given sentence that will deter people. Because where I have a little knowledge about it is I know. Corruption is very cheap. It can even lead to issue of death sentence because of the nature of what those who are doing corruption are doing. That is why that we need serious sanction against those who engage in corruption. That makes sense. Another issue is that we have weak systems. Our governance system is weak. That's why people have opportunity to engage in corruption. The ICPC chairman stressed further that the fight against corruption and cybercrime was not limited to any single faith, adding that it was a collective responsibility that transcends religious boundaries. That will be all on this segment. Corruption Must Go continues with Muna. Stay with us. If you're just tuning in, this is still corruption must go. It is often said that the minds of children are like sponges, rapidly assimilating mannerisms, habits, and ideas from their environment. This makes it imperative that parents, teachers, and guardians are intentional about the knowledge that their words seek and consume. The Corruption Must Go crew spoke to a few people about the danger of misplaced societal values, the negative impact it has on children and youth, and how to reverse the trend. Social vices goes both ways. There can be, it can be good, it can be bad, depending on how you monitor your child. Most children these days definitely they need the internet because of school. They give them assignments mostly on the internet. They need to browse the internet for their school and every other thing. But I've always advised parents to always put that parental control on their children's phones and tablets. Because with parental control, you are in charge of whatever your child is doing with that phone. You have access to whatever uh, um, download the child wants to do, whatever uh, um, internet the child wants to open up, whatever the child wants to get access into. They must take permission from you first. Also, pair groups. You should, as a parent, you should know the kind of pair group your child is keeping, the kind of friends your child moves with. There's a normal saying that goes, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. 
when you see your child moving with people that you know can lead that child wrongly, lead that child astray, you on your own might have done a good job in training your child very well, but you are not always there with the child 24 hours. That child goes to school, that child mixes up with different people. So it's for you to take note and be available at every point in time in that child's life to say no stay away from this friend stay away from this friend keep this friend keep this friend that child is just a growing child he or she doesn't really know her right from her wrong at this point in time as a parent you should be in charge of that teach the child in time early enough to always ask before you take anything even if that thing has been bought for that child. Like I always tell my children, yes, I know it's your snacks. I know it's for school. But always ask before you take it. When that child has imbibed that habit of always asking, that child knows that I can't take what doesn't belong to me. That child will not go stealing. Let me, uh, first of all, notify the parent that Children are a gift from God. At the same time, it's a trust on parent. Whatever is a trust on someone, such person should expect that there is a day of accountability. There are so many benefits children can drive from this social media like area of studies it is good for a child to associate with other people with other child because not all the parent alone cannot give him all what he needed at that stage. So at that stage, at a parent, what is expected from you is not to be bullying him, harassing him, or beating him. Identify the characters, changes in his characters, based on his, uh, based on his uh, association with a peer group. Whatever that is good, encourage him. Encourage him to sustain that. Anything that is bad, don't shout, don't beat. What is expected from you as a parent is to tell him, look, these are the disadvantages. This is where you came from. This habit is not ours. Instead of going that way, why not do it that way? This is what is expected from all parents, but not to stop him from associating with other children. spoke with some children about the importance of learning about integrity and avoiding the pitfalls of corruption from early age. Take a listen. Social vices play a great role in either promoting or eradicating corruption. The Corruption Must Go crew are live here in GSS Mabuchi to talk with the students and teachers of the school to know their perspective on social vices and how it can be used to prevent corruption. Join us as we talk to them. Focusing more on uh, these technologies such as phones, metal platforms, the internet, and cards uh, and all that. We can have the content to get exposed to with these technologies uh, can prove dangerous to or can influence us negatively in you know, how we think and act in social life. For example, we have uh, pornography. 
So pornography is one bad, uh, one negative thing about these technologies that can influence us for the bad, right? And then another thing uh, about these technologies is that if you are not control, if you don't control these technologies, it will rob us of our time. You know, when you're a student and you have things to do, you want to read, you rather want to, because of the, uh, the presence of these technologies, you want to go to TikTok to watch videos, you want to go to YouTube, Facebook, and that will just rob you of, uh, of time you need to do. Uh, useful things like reading and book, studying and all that. So that's some of the ways that us In our country today, in our world generally, we have a lot of social vices ranging from the TV to the radio, the social media, the phones, the tablets and all that. And this tends to draw the attention of so many children out there. I mean, if you come to a community, out of a hundred percent, it is let me say twenty percent or ten that do not have access to these accessories. So, in the negative impact on which these things have on the children, it has gone a long way in destroying them. I mean, yes, we argue that it has its own positive impact, mm -hmm. but as they say, every everything that has an advantage also have a disadvantage, ranging from the time these children spend on doing these things that might seem worthless to them, also to the, the things you know, how it affects them socially, mentally, what they see there that do not have impact but instead draws their mind away from the academics. I mean, this technological development, the AI, which we all know of today, has made so many children so reluctant to learn. They do not want to engage in school activities. They do not want to work hard and succeed because they believe that, okay, these things are already there. These things are already there for us to just pick it and that's it. So they do not want to work hard at all for anything and it will affect us a lot in the future. When the children are being into like peer pressure, they are being pressured by their peers, they will, let's take it from this that in their education, they will not concentrate on their education. They will be like, let me feel among with my peers. So that will affect the children mentally and physically, whereby leading the children to ending up in um, corruption practices, corrupt practices such as they will be cheating in exams and thereby making them not to become good leaders in the future. I would like to advise the children like me that they should shun corruption, they should not be part of corruption because this can affect them mentally and physically, making them to become school dropout, become wayward in the society, become a nuisance in the society. Being a person of integrity helps you develop positive character and which shuns corruption and makes you stay very far from corruption. You see, in this part of the world, Nigeria, corruption is kind of a common thing. And Somehow, some people think they benefit from it, but everything has its own reward. When you engage in corruption, the reward is like very, very bad. You face a very terrible consequences. But based on the anti-corruption club, which we have in our school here, I've learned to develop integrity, to be a person of integrity and character, which helps me stay away from corruption. Corruption, and it helps me to behave positively in any kind of, of affairs I, I, in any kind of affairs I found myself in. So it's helped me to relate positively in my social life, my friends, and what I do in class. So you see, this corruption of a thing, it has integrity. Some people go into examination, my practice, stealing, lying, and all sorts of negative behaviors. But when you have integrity, when it goes into your subconscious that you're a person of integrity, when you want to engage, we are all humans, we encounter temptation. But when you engage, when you have integrity, whenever I want to engage in such activities, you feel, uncomfortable, you know, be, your mind will not allow you to do such things. This talking about the social vices, let me say for example, the social media, internet, um, television, radio, phone, tablet and all that. You know, at this hour, lifetime right now, many teenagers and youth waste their time on focusing on all these social vices without focusing on their studies at this level of their life. 
know as teenagers and youth right now, our main aim and objective is for us to focus on our education and for us to study. So these, these social vices affect us teenagers or youth negatively by this stage of our time. It wastes our time for us. We might use that time to read, but all those time we waste on the internet, social media, televisions and all that. It is more it is more effective when we use it on studying and learning. And when we spend more time learning and studying, we might be the best in our classes. It's important for parents to be involved in the life of their children, to help them fight the social vices. So my advice as a teacher to parents today is that parents should get involved in the lives of their children. You know, create that safe space where your child can open up to you and tell you whatever is going on in their life, whatever is happening in school. And as parents also, you need to serve as a role model to your child. You don't only tell the child, do this, while you as a parent, you are not doing that. So be that positive role model to your children, okay? And also, you can know, know their friends. As parents, it's very important for you to be involved in the relationships of your children, get to know their friends, and then create boundaries. Create boundaries and restrictions when it comes to social media usage and their exposure to the internet. Thank you. We try to teach them social norms and values. These social norms are in the like of being honest, being responsible, being humble, and don't seek for things that they know they cannot afford. We also look at the aspect of where you see them having peer groups that influence them. We tell them, don't be part of this, because if you are part of it, it's going to have a negative effect on your life. So in order to combat this, we at times have a forum. We have, have fora like the um, DTA meetings where these social vices are discussed along with the parents. We also have a WhatsApp forum where we tell the parents this is what is happening. If it's one that um, requires urgent attention, we call on the parents to come to the school immediately so that we find a way how will we stop the child from engaging in them. I am a Nigerian, a highly cultured race. My culture abhors corruption, and with my integrity, a new Nigeria is possible. I say no to corruption today to build a future for my children. Join me and imbibe the culture of integrity to build a Nigeria of our dreams. It is clear that educating children and youths on the ills of corruption and focusing on behavioral change presents a unique opportunity for nipping antisocial vices in the bud. Indeed, if youths have a solid social cultural foundation, the nation would be better for it. Watch out for another interesting edition, 3.30 p.m. every Wednesday on NTA Network and NTA International for another episode of Corruption Must Go. That's our package for this week. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. I am Murna Barnabas Atiai.